the scene, there's one up here, and one down here, this blue one, and, uh, and basically every, all the lighting that happens outside of these two cones is just a flat ambient term, right? So you can see it's very flat over here, you don't see any detail in these arches and in these hallways. Um, so let's go into the, the direct lighting plus indirect lighting now, which is, um, it, these lights were already there in the scene, but <laughs> you, you didn't see them because there was no balances happening, as Tony explained. Um, so now what you have is, uh, there's the, the, let's flip back and forth to give you a good idea here. <clears throat> these arches are a great example, right? There's no light falling on these arches directly from the light sources. So what you need is indirect lighting, which is light that bounces off of a surface and then lights another surface to get light to go into these areas. And there's a number of really interesting effects that are, that are enabled by this. One is, um, this is a completely real-time effect, you actually get real-time specular or glossy reflections, uh, which are entirely indirectly lit, right? This is just light that's falling on this surface from this emitter that's on, uh, that, that these emitters that are on these, uh, these little uh, TVs uh, in, in, in the hallway. And, um, and as the and specular is notoriously hard because it's, it's inherently dynamic, right? Because it's dependent on the viewer. The, the change is based on where, how your view angle changes. So you see that the specular is done entirely correctly. Um, other things we can do here is that we can have area light sources. So these little, uh, these boxes that these dino, these dino bones are in are actually area light sources. And so looking at this triceratops here, you can see that there's a, a really, really high quality ambient occlusion type effect. And, and this is a notoriously difficult sort of shape to get real ambient occlusion on using screen space techniques. You can see here that you have really great ambient occlusion um, all sourced in real time from this area light source. Um, another thing you can do, we can actually move these lights around so this is the lower left, what you're going to see is basically the, the view from the light's perspective. You can move, move uh, this light or you can move this other light as well, um, which is the blue light here. And, and one thing you'll get as you, as you move around this light, um, you see the, the cone of influence basically that the light has. Um, but even things outside of this cone of influence, like look at this archway back here. Let me get out of this one to get closer so you guys get a good look here. Um, if you look at this archway, there's actually, the, the, the extent of the light ends right, right at, this, at this boundary of the spotlight, right? So if I <clears throat> move this light, you can see that the lighting is changing inside of that arch, even though no direct light is falling on, on, on that surface. So that's entirely because of the bounce that happens off of the floor. The light bounces off the floor and hits the arch and, uh, and adds light there. So yeah, that's that's global illumination. So yeah, I guess we're done with that.